You see this one? We got a, in a car accident last winter, I have the cuts instead of wearing the regular bandage, I decided to wear this kind of bandage. You know, I'm just joking. I'm just trying to remember. <laughs> in God we trust. We here live in America, and this wonderful memorial named Wicked. It does what this country is found apart. In God we trust. Last week I read a, a story, I don't know how true today, I didn't have time to check it out. A friend of mine forwarded me an email, a friend who lived in Texas, saying that a few years ago in a small town in Texas, you know, this is a Bible Belt, and um, there's a man who opened a bar just near their church. So the congregation was quite upset. So they did petitions and everything, but finally they lost the case. And so the man was allowed to build a bar nearby the church. Now the congregation, being the wonderful people of faith, they gather together and they pray that that bar will can never be open. And a few days before the bar actually had a grand opening, a tornado struck and removed the bar. Now the owner of the bar sued the congregation <laughs> because they said that by their power that God has intervened and they're liable to his bar uh, being taken away. Now, of course the congregation denied, so they went in front of the judge, and the judge said, well, I really don't know what to tell you guys here, but I can only honestly tell you, here's a bar owner who believe in the power of prayer, and the congregation who don't. <laughs> you got the joke? Some of you don't. Well, because they deny by the power that God intervenes, and when the owner died, the bar owner truly believed that's exactly what happened. My dear friend, isn't that sometimes happened in your life and my life? Again, I don't know how true that story is. I just read it and I thought it's funny. <laughs> how often do you and I sometimes we fall into that? You know, we pray a lot. And then we ask for interventions from God. We, and then when things happen, we just like, oh, we're okay, you know, not the bad things, and then we just move on. Our faith are not being deepened by those miracles that God has in our life. This nation was founded in God we trust. And actually, you open our dineros, the money, you see the same word on it. That's the basic of this human condition. We trust in God. But where is that God? Who is the God that we trust today? What God? The God of money? The God of wealth? The God of sun? The God of moon? Who, whose God are we trusting these days? A few weeks ago, I gave a homily on that we have taken God above our head and put him down and step in on him and we take everything that God given to us on the floor everything else and we put them up here and we begin to worship them. That's what happened these days. We no longer put God first in the family. This morning by the 9.30 mass I met a lot of the family from Columbus. You know that's my previous church before I came here. And they came and um, they would rejoice to see me. Well, I didn't really rejoice to see them, but I was happy. But, well, I was happy that uh, they travel here for this Memorial Day weekend and they show up in church. And to me, that's the most important thing. People normally ask me, uh, if I go on vacation, do I have to go to church? That's the question they always ask me. And my answer to them is simple. If where you go on vacation to the church is farther from your house than a place of vacation, you have to go. If it's shorter, you have to go. If it's farther, you don't have to. If you can drive 300 miles to go on vacation, why can't you drive 300 miles to go to church? So vacation is more important than God. God doesn't take vacation, I tell people that. If God decided to take my annual vacation, you and I would be dropped in debt now. If he takes his eyes off us, 20 seconds, we all stop breathing. He doesn't take vacation. He always be there for us. 
And he tell us today, not only I will be there for you, but you know my father who's in me is going to be there with you and for you too. And wow, you know, just like every TV, inter, um, uh, what you call that, the uh, advertise this thing. And wait a second, if you call within the 30 seconds, we will not put you our order for free. Just pay shipping and handle it. <laughs> right, that's what we do every day. Well, you know what, if you make the commitment within before you died, God would not put that off. Not only he said, I'm going to be there for you, I will not leave you often. His word today, very strong. Because you are in me, and I'm in you. And when you are in me, the Father is in you. But way ahead, here's the bonus. The advocate be there for you. To the Holy Spirit be there. The Holy Spirit will be in you to strengthen you to do great things. You know, I came from Chicago. We don't have a lot of our Protestant older denominations. You know, I came down here but when I became a priest. I was overwhelmed of how many of them are there. And as a priest, I, I love them. Every time when I do weddings, you know, I always ask the non-Catholic partner. I say, uh, do you want your minister to be at the wedding? I will be happy to have him up on the altar with me. And if he loves to give the homily, I'd be happy to give it to him so I don't have to prepare one. <laughs> and, uh, but one thing I learned quick, I would give any minister to be on the altar except the Pentecostal minister. When they're on the altar, they dance, they do all the crazy things. You know, you think I'm crazy? I am nothing compared with them. They make the altar become a joke. Well, because they believe in the Holy Spirit. That alone they believe. Because they move by the Spirit. You and I are not just being moved by the Holy Spirit, but we're being guided by also the Word of God. Jesus said today, if you love me, you prove to me by following what I tell you. You follow my commandments. And that's sometimes you say, what do you mean? Well, all you parents understand that, right? Your parents will always tell you when you grow up, you love me, why don't you know what I ask you? But Jesus said the same thing today. Nothing extraordinary is very normal. He said, you love me, just do what I ask. Just do what I ask. If you call within 30 seconds, whatever they call, I hear Jesus say, well, you don't have to call within the next 30 seconds. I'm glad you do, but even you call on me before you die. I double the offer for you. I give you the Father, and I give you the Holy Spirit. All three of us are going to be in you. My dear friends, life is never easy. We all understand that. This morning, somebody just told me that they're 57 years of uh, marriage, right? Is, are they called this mass or the mass before this? I, I'm totally confused. But that's you who tell me that? It's next month. Next month, 57 years of marriage. I thought I'm congratulations. you done your purgatory, you're ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> wow, see, purgatory doesn't mean pain and hardship. Purgatory for us Catholics means you have perfected your life. Heaven means we see God who He is. Who is He? Love. So we go through the process so that we can perfect our love for God. So when we are through the purgatory and into heaven, we actually not just live in love, but we are the images of love. That many years of marriage, I say, well, if they really don't love us long, they don't last that long. The perfection of love through some type of pains and testing. Sometimes doing what Jesus said, follow my commandments. So my dear friend, don't be like that congregation who, don't, who pray to God all the time, and when it happened, they say, no, it didn't happen. We are true believers. Because all the Trinity is in us, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We are that images of God. Remember, you and I are created in that image. So my dear friends, 
the journey continue every time we fall stand up and keep moving forward because Jesus Christ has fall and he stood up so can we don't let anything hold you down keep moving forward and I will see you in heaven